Welcome back to Spending Time in Papa's Barn, where I like to show you how to make your own products, how to make things for your own tractor. My tractor is a 2032R. And recently I've seen on a lot of the trends on uh, Facebook that people are having issues with venting their front axles. They're putting pressure without and blowing their seals on the front axle. Well, let me show you how I fix my issue. This is a factory plug. It has no venting on it, but I had to figure out what my threads were on my 2032R. My threads are actually 3 quarter by 10. I went out to all the local automobile places, parts stores, and I was looking for a drain plug that would match mine. Unfortunately, they didn't have one. Everything but mine. But, didn't stop me. I'll show you how to make one. I'm going to go ahead and and zoom in here a minute and I'll show you my plug and how I routed it. But before we actually show you how I totally assemble it, we're going to go out into Papa's Barn and we're going to make one. Alright, we're actually in Papa's Barn where the magic happens. So the first thing we need to do is determine the sizes of things we need to make. As I discussed earlier, I found out my threads were 3 quarter by 10. So I actually want to now make a little sketch showing my part, what I need to make. Please forgive my artistry. I didn't do well in school. So basically there's our shape of our part. So all I want to do is try to make my part exactly the same as a factory's. So the first thing I want to do, I want to take my calipers. I want to make sure they're at zero, and they are. I want to measure the first step. So that's approximately 452 thousandths. So I want to make a line showing that's 452 thousandths from, from this face to there. So now I want to determine the overall length of my uh, fill gauge to know where I'm at on my fill. That's 2.145. So we'll go up here. 2.145. That's the overall length. Now I want to know the diameter of my pen. That's a quarter inch. Now we need to figure out where our fill gauge line is. So it's one and a three quarter inches. So our fill gauge line, we'll make it out here to here, is one and three fourth inches. Let me turn off my battery on my calipers. It looks like it's starting to die anyhow. So what I did, like I said, I went out and I found out it was 3 quarter 10. I found a bolt. I went to TSC and bought this. Now it needs to be completely fully threaded. For whenever I take and put a, an O-ring up here. When it smashes down, I'm going to be able to be nice and snug. Now I was thinking about what could I use for that quarter inch. And what could you guys do at home? for that quarter inch. Then I thought, why not a quarter 20 bolt? So what we could do with a quarter 20 bolt, if you don't have a welder, I'm going to get ahead of myself here, you can actually put a nut up there. So when we threw, screw this in, you can actually use the nut after determine your length to your gauge line and use that nut for a lock locking nut. So the first thing we need to do is start laying this out a little bit. So I know my first step is going to be 452 thousandths. I need to cut. I need to cut this too. So I'm going to set my caliper to about 452. And I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark approximately where that's going to be at. Now that's, this is not going to be super critical because when we get into it. We're going to be establishing our gauge line, this gauge line, from this edge. We really don't care how much thread's in there as long as it doesn't hit anything. 
our main concern is from this face right here to that gauge line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put a vise up here. I'm going to get my right angle grinder and we're going to cut this off to approximately 452 thousandths long from this face. Give me one second. All right, before we get going again, let's talk about shop safety. Let's make sure you have your hearing protection on. Make sure you got safety glasses, gloves when it's appropriate. You know, you got to be aware of having uh, flammable materials when you're grinding or something like that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a right angle grinder. You probably won't be able to see us real well. I'm on a, the line I marked a minute ago. I'm going to cut that off. Let me go ahead and cut it off. It's going to be a little noisy, but bear with me. I actually have a different vise I use for my use, but for my videos, I want to use this little one. Don't reach down and grab it. That's going to be hot. So when it cools down, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to put it on the belt sander. I'm going to remove the burrs on it and clean it up a little bit. I'll, I'll show you what the sander does to cut off. So there's a real sharp edge on here. That's the main thing I want to take off. I just want to clean that edge up. Again, with all the proper PPE. I cleaned up the threads, kind of cleaned off the top here. Let's go back now. We're going to lay out the holes we're going to drill. We're going to do an eighth inch pipe tap up here on the top, do a quarter twenty bolt in the bottom. So I want to find the center of my bolt. So I've got a center finder on my square, which actually is a little bit overkill. I'm just going to draw me a line. I want to make a couple of lines in there because I'm going to average it out and find the center from there. So the intersection there is going to be my, my center. Now the top is going to be a little easier. I'm going to go from the corner of the hex to the corner of the hex. Okay. Now I'm going to center punch it. All right, we're ready to drill. Let me go ahead and move over the drill press and let's start. Now I've got a number six drill bit, which is a pre-drill for quarter 20 in, my, in the chuck. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm only gonna drill about three quarters of the way through. Then I'm gonna flip it over. I you use a number S drill, which is a pre-tap drill for a, a 3 8 national pipe tap. So let me go ahead and drill this. This is a hardened bolt, so I'm going to actually use a little oil on this one. Let me get it started.
kind of thing I'm deep enough on that side. Now to my bit, I'll go to a uh, letter S, which is a 348 diameter. It's not flat. I'm going to start be picking up my number six drill bit hole in the back side so you can hear a little chatter. All right, I'm deep enough so I can tap it. Before I tap it, what I want to do is I want to come back and we can add a vent hole. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make a little center punch mark on here. Then I'm going to cock this in the vise and I'm going to use a smaller drill bit. And I'm going to drill a hole from the side here, intersect in for our vent hole. Let me go ahead and set that up and I'll be right back. Alright, I've got a number 49 drill bit chucked up here. I've actually got my part sitting at an angle so I can drill and hopefully catch way down below the threads there. So, when you do this, take your time. Because it's a smaller drill bit. Yeah, I should have to speed up a little bit on this so I'm not going to. But what I want to do is catch the shoulder from this S drill bit hole and the number six drill where it makes a flange and I want to pick up that edge and I want to drill straight down. Let's see how she goes. Take your time, there's no rush. Take your time, you don't want to drill the, break the drill bit because it's going to actually break through the thread here in a minute. So just ease into it. clearing the shavings out of it, so I don't want that drill bit to get bound up in there and get tight and snap off. Alright, I just broke through. Let's see how far down we broke through. Broke down through the bottom. Great, that's perfect. Well, let me go ahead and we'll set up over here and we'll tap, uh, chamfer the corners and we will tap the holes. While I was at the drill press, I went ahead and chamfered the edges kind of helps get started. Now I've got an eighth inch pipe tap. A little oil to start it on. It's going to take a little pressure to get it going. But you want to try to keep this as straight as you can. So eyeball it in multiple directions to get it started and make sure you're going straight. Now if you notice I'm going back and forth a little bit. That back and forth will actually break the shavings inside of it. It creates chips, and the chips can plug 
your tap up and cause your problems in tapping. Actually, it can help you, it'll break your tap at times, but just take your time. Take a little gum out carburetor cleaner, kind of clean up the shavings, push them down the bottom. Take my plug, see if she starts. Yep, she starts. Let's flip it over and do the quarter 20. Again, keep it straight. Put a little pressure on to get it started. And you can probably hear the shavings crack on this one because it's too fluted. Getting easy, so now it's all the way through. You see my little hole there? There's my vent hole right there. Now let's go back to our quarter twenty bolt we bought earlier. Look at there. Nice. Let me go ahead and clean up what I've got and I'll be right back. At this point we got a, two different directions we can go. If you don't have a little welder at home you can take and put your nut on your bolt. You can screw it all the way in and what we're going to do at this point is we're going to set that distance for the overall length of the dipstick. Now since I'm going to tack mine, I'm going to take this nut off and I'm going to cut my threads way back. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back with you. Alright, I've taken, cut the bolt off. I've actually belt sanded the end to make a nice radius. I'm going to go ahead and snug this up in there pretty tight. Now remember we took another dimension that's actually to my, the fill stick here. The other fill indicator right here. So I want to measure that again and I know we had written down one and three quarter inches. Let's just do it again. One and three quarter inches. It's off this face of that flange. So I want again, I want to take my marker and I'll draw me a line. Now I want to make sure this line is nice and heavy because what I want to do is I'm going to take it out I'm going to chuck it up a drill press I'm going to take a small file and I'm going to take and I'm going to push in on the, on the screw as it's spinning and I'm going to create that little bitty V there. Give me one second I'll be right back. To me making these parts are not hard to do. The hardest part for me is to try to figure out how to set my camera 
and get you lighting before you can actually see me do it. I've got that bolt that's cut off set in my drill chuck and I got the line, I don't know if you can see it, it's right here. I got a small file, a little square file. Actually it's a triangle file. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start it. Now I'm going to take my file and I'm going to push it on that black line. Let's see how it goes. Got one in there. Let me go ahead and we'll switch back over to the bench and I'll, I'm going to actually uh, set the dimensions and I'm going to tack it. All right, I've got the groove set. You can feel it with your fingernail. Now I'm going to take a white marker pen and I'm going to take and put a paint in there for you can I can see it later. But this again, if you actually don't have a welder at home, you can actually put your nut in here and lock it down. But I'm going to set my dimension and I'm going to double check it. Always double check things, you know. You can make mistakes. So I've got this at 1 inch 746. It's pretty close right there. So let me go ahead and I'm going to tack this in place and I'll come right back. Alright, I took the Liberty after I tacked it. You can see a little tack here. I'm installing the pipe fitting on the end of it. I put a little white line from a paint marker in there. Now we're going to put an O-ring on here. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and move to my garage and I'll show you the, how I assemble the rest of it. Alright, let's take a look at what I've got here. I've got my vent I made. i got an O-ring sitting on it. I've got a piece of a hose. I've got an inline fuel filter and I've got an axle vent. I'm going to put all that together to make my front axle vent for my 2032R. Let me go ahead and assemble this and I will put it on the track. It's hard to show how I got it mounted, but there right there is my vent cap. There is an inline fuel filter right there. And I actually drilled a hole right next to my battery uh, discharge, liquid discharge, to run it up here. I mean, it's nice and neat. It's out of the way. It's not going to fall into my fan. It's going to be just as clean as you can get it. Again, this is my actual vent mounted into the tractor. There's an O-ring underneath there. Yeah, I got plenty of uh, line there for it to flex and move with the axle. Thanks again for tuning in and spending some time in Papa's barn. I don't know about you, but projects like this where I can make $60 in an hour of my time making my own parts, I'm going to do that. I hope I can have shown you guys how you can do it yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Again, if you like this type of video, please subscribe and like. Until next time, meet again in, uh, in Papa's Barn. Thank you.